few days ago, Facebook Research Group from Meta has released a new machine learning model for tracking points uh, in a video. And here are the couple of examples of the results. So here uh, we have a, a biker with a helmet uh, riding on a bicycle, right? So here we are tracking the helmet, uh, the body parts uh, and the bike. Uh, similar examples, uh, here we have a jockey uh, riding a horse. Uh, from the helmet, you can see these red uh, traces, right? That's the path the he helmet uh, took in this video. And then uh, here we have a biker. And uh, in this example, you can see this person uh, with this uh, pink uh, trace, right? So here we are tracking uh, just one point uh, on this person's body. And then we are tracking multiple points uh, on this parachute, okay? Right, so they have a number of uh, very nice uh, examples uh, you can see uh, here. I provide the link in the description below. And then uh, they have compared the results, uh, which is this uh, Facebook model. It's uh, called Co-Tracker uh, with a couple of uh, previous models. Okay. Uh, the results look uh, quite impressive. I mean, uh, so even in these uh, looks like low resolution videos, they are able to track uh, quite well. For example, in this uh, video, we are tracking this person on a trampoline. Uh, maybe I can do this. Yeah. So here you can see this person, he is jumping up and down. So you can see that foot uh, also uh, going up and down. And then uh, finally uh, he flip uh, around, right? So it's tracking quite well. I have tested it on a couple of videos. Uh, so the results looking uh, quite good. Um, yeah. So uh, this code I am running on Colab uh, because it requires GPU. So what you do is you go to runtime, uh, change runtime type. So by default, this will be a CPU. So choose a GPU and uh, the TPUs are available only for paid version. Even within GPUs, uh, there are only certain types uh, we can choose. All right. I think it's only T4. Uh, in order to choose these more advanced versions, we need to have a paid account, but T4 is okay. All right. Now, if I run the notebook end to end, uh, when I ran it, I ran into a couple of issues uh, with the memory, uh, not enough memory. And this notebook demonstrate a couple of different ways we can use the library. So what I done is uh, I have run uh, a different uh, uh, methods at different times okay i'm not running all the methods at the same time because uh, by the time i, I uh, reach the end of the notebook uh, i ran into uh, memory issues all right so let's start uh, so this is the repository uh, i again i provide the link to this notebook uh, this is a demo uh, facebook research group has put together okay it's not my code all right so we download the repo and then we go to the folders, uh, co-tracker. Okay, so this is the folder uh, we have uh, just cloned. And then, now it will have all these uh, folders except this checkpoint. So what we are doing is, uh, we are CD2 uh, co-tracker and then installing a couple of libraries. And then make a folder called checkpoints. And then uh, go to the folder and then download this uh, checkpoint or the model. So they have a couple of models. Uh, again, uh, the URLs are provided on their GitHub repo. Uh, so this is, uh, I guess, uh, 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 the low lower weight uh, model. I mean, the larger the model, the better the results will be. But again, we require more RAM, more processing power, uh, etc. Right? Uh, but if you want to try uh, the other models, uh, you can simply replace uh, uh, this line. Okay? All right. Uh, and then, uh, so importing the libraries, Torch, uh, that's obviously to do the uh, uh, model inference. Uh, and then we are using uh, this 
b64 encoder uh, to process the video and display uh, within this uh, notebook and the more important one is this visualizer so using this module uh, we can add the traces uh, on our input video so that we can visualize how different points are uh, moving uh, in the video okay and this one is just for reading the video all right uh, so html is just rendering the video uh, within the notebook so here we have a helper function uh, it's mostly this uh, html thing so we are just taking the video path as an input and reading the video and then displaying it as this uh, 640 by 480 dimension okay so first we are uh, so within this assets folder uh, the default folder uh, it comes with this apple.mp4 and this is how it looks like and this is the video uh, they have used for uh, demonstrating different capabilities but i find this a bit challenging because here uh, the object is not moving here the camera is moving and the two it is rotating around this apple so it's a bit hard to visualize the traces uh, the reason is so the points will be rotating uh, around this apple right so it's a bit hard to visualize whereas if this apple is moving in any one direction then it would have been easier to see okay what is my initial point and where is uh, it going so it's easy to do the tracing and tracking right so what i did is uh, i took a small uh, sample video from a computer vision data sets uh, and this is how it looks like so here we are simply calling this function show video uh, with the, a video so this is the video uh, as you can see it's just two seconds clip uh, so we can see some people moving right for example this guy he is moving in this direction and this uh, the one in this red shirt he is moving back and uh, the, uh, this one also moving in the forward direction right so it's easy to trace uh, i mean for us i mean for the computer vision model uh, processing this video and this video is uh, just the same but for us it's easy to uh, track the traces uh, for the moving things uh, in this video okay all right uh, but if you want to run the code uh, just again uh, uh, obviously you will not have this line uh, in the uh, demo notebook uh, so the demo notebook is using this apple.mp4 but in this video we are going to process this track.mp4 which is this video all right now uh, they are reshaping the video here uh, so our video uh, it's the 720 by 1280 dimension and this three represent the three color channels and the 70 that's the number of frames we have within this uh, two seconds uh, video clip okay now this padding uh, this extra dimension we are adding here i'm not sure uh, what is exactly it is doing but when i ran with a couple of different videos so leaving it as default uh, worked fine okay so the four important dimensions are just this uh, uh, the video resolution size the color channels and then the number of frames okay all right so and then here we are loading the model okay some from a uh, co-track uh, predictor uh, we can uh, 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 input our video along with uh, uh, certain configuration parameters uh, to trace uh, what we want to trace okay so this is the model uh, which we downloaded and put it in this uh, checkpoints folder okay so as i mentioned uh, facebook has a few other models uh, you can download those models and put them in this checkpoints folder and you can use uh, any uh, other model as well all right so we have the model now uh, we can uh, do the inference so the first one so there are they have demonstrated six examples i uh, will see all these six examples so in the first one we are providing our video and then we are specifying a grid size of 30. so what this means is uh, it will have this 30 by 30 grid on the video and then it will process or track all those uh, 900 points okay so we are running the inference and uh, for those 900 points the traces are uh, recorded uh, in this spread tracks okay and then uh, this visualizer function uh, using this uh, we can add 
uh, the traces on our video so that we can visualize them okay so here we are simply saying hey this is where you save the output and this extra 100 this is the padding uh, this white space you can see because some of the points they might be moving out of the uh, this frame right uh, you will see in this video uh, and then uh, here we provide uh, uh, our input video and then uh, we provide uh, the pre tracks so this pre tracks uh, contains uh, the track or the trace of these 900 points okay and then you can supply this of uh, any file name now to the file name uh, it is by default appending this underscore pre track dot mp4 so we only supply this prefix and the library by default it is uh, appending uh, this path uh, so that uh, yeah and then uh, we can use the same helper function which we used here to visualize uh, uh, the output video okay so this is how it looks like uh, let me run close this yeah so uh let's start from the beginning so that we can make, okay all right so we have these 900 points right 30 in this direction 30 in this direction now in this video uh this ground part obviously it is not moving so these points should remain uh, where they are now we can see this guy uh, he is the one who moved most in this video so we have a couple of blue color points on his back. So as he move in the forward direction, these blue points uh, should also be moving. And then this guy, uh, this the one in red uh, shirt, he is uh, moving in the opposite direction. So these couple of blue uh, green points, they should be moving in the opposite direction. And then this guy is also moving. So these green points should also be moving. The others have uh, uh, relatively less movement. So let's focus only on these three guys. Okay. Uh, this red one, the one and this guy. All right. So as we can see, these blue points as well as these green points, they are moving in the forward direction. And these green points on this red shirt guy, those are uh, moving uh, in this direction okay so this means we are able to track and all the uh, remaining points uh, they are where they are now there is slight uh, uh, vibration but you can ignore that okay all right so that's the default way of using it but in most applications we might not want to track everything uh, uh, in a video for example in the examples we uh, we saw uh, put together with, by the facebook uh, we have a biker uh, on a bicycle or a jockey on a horse uh, like that right so we don't we want to track a few objects of interest not everything in the video so how do we do that now instead of having a grid size this time we can uh, provide a few specific points okay so in this case uh, here we are creating a variable called uh, this queries what we are doing is these are the xy points now you remember our video size is 720 by 1280 so we have 720 uh, in this y direction and 1220 in the x direction so we have chosen some six uh, points uh, for example one is this 400 by 400 i'll show you where these points are on the video um, yeah so this second and third coordinate they represents the xy coordinates and then uh, the first one it represent uh, the frame number so except for the second one these four points we are tracking from frame number one okay and then uh, the second point we are tracking it from frame number 40 so when the video is at frame number 40 it find out the point which is this 500 by 500 and then trace from that point onwards okay so the initial so this point at frame number zero will be somewhere else right at 40th frame the point is at this coordinate uh, 500 comma uh, 500 uh, that will be clear in the video so what we do is 
uh, we call the model uh, the same way we supply the input video but this time instead of the grid we are supplying uh, the queries okay all right so again the output will be these tracks and similarly uh, we can use this uh, visualizer helper function to add uh, the traces uh, back to our video and then save them uh, in uh, uh, in a file so again we are supplying this file name queries and it is appending this spread track dot mp4 as the uh, 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 to its name so we are displaying the video now let's start so we are tracking four points right yeah so we are tracking five points but four points are from the first frame so these four points as you can see one two three four so these four points will be tracked for the rest of the video and then we have another point but this should be tracked from frame number 40 and this coordinate is computed at frame number 40 okay all right so let's see so this coordinate uh, on this guy so this should be moving because this is on the ground which is not moving anywhere so this should be staying as it is uh, this uh, should be moving uh, I'm not sure if don't remember if it is exactly on the ground or on this guy but let's see so as the video as the output all right so this trace we can see this guy coming in the opposite direction we can see probably here hand moved a bit uh, back side so that's why you can see uh, that path and this guy also moved in the front direction and then around here at frame number around 40 we have a new point yeah you see this new point that's this point of 500 comma 500 okay so and then because this is on the ground uh, this point is not moving okay so here we have seen two examples so far one we can just create a grid of size a specific size and every point on that grid uh, is tracked but that would be a lot of computations and we might uh, and again in applications we might be interested in a specific objects uh, the trajectory so what we do is we choose uh, those object coordinates and the frame number and it ne not necessarily be in uh, the first frame because imagine we have a video where it does not have object of interest but uh, with the time uh, let's say uh, uh, so our object of interest enter the frame uh, at let's say frame number 100 so because it is not available in first frame we cannot specify the coordinates right so what we do is hey from frame number 100 track this coordinate okay all right so that's the second one and then uh, the third one uh, we have a additional parameter which is called this grid query frame okay this is exactly similar to this one uh, we have here uh, now remember we our video has 70 frames so our, the two seconds uh, clip has 70 frames all right so in the third one it's called this tracking forward from frame number x okay so again we supply the video we supply the grid size uh, so this is similar to method one but this time instead of tracking the points from the very beginning of the frame we are tracking them from a specific frame okay then the visualizer code is exactly the same and this is how uh, the results look like so again we are taking the output video and displaying it here so So this is the output as we have defined we want the trace from frame number 50 okay so for the first 50 frames we are not tracking anything okay so somewhere here when we have frame number 50 yeah you see that's when the grid is created so around frame 50 the grid is created and then for the rest of the 20 frames uh, each point on the grid is being tracked so here you can see the moment Yeah, so here you will see these guys um, moving in the opposite directions. Okay, all right. Now the next one we can track backward as well. Uh, this is interesting. Uh, it's exactly the same query, but we are providing an additional argument 
backward tracking as well okay we are enabling the backward tracking so uh, everything the same now this is interesting the reason is as you see at frame here we have the grid on the four corners that's looking good but in this middle portion you will see the points those are not on the grid the reason is we are saying hey create a grid at frame number 50 i'll show you yeah this is uh, frame number 50 so we have the perfect grid and then what we are saying is track all these points forward in time as well as backward in time okay so these are our reference points now for example this point which is here uh, just below or near uh, this uh, number 26 let's see where they are in frame number one so if you are going back going back yeah so this is where those two points are right and by the time it reaches to frame number 50 we have the grid so what the model is essentially doing is it's processing two ways first it will go to frame number 50 it will create a grid and then let's say in step number which is forward step it will be tracing those points uh, in forward direction and then in step number two it will be tracking those points those points in backward directions as well okay uh, i hope that's uh, is clear so we are tracking these reference points both in the forward direction as well as in the backward direction now this is different different to tracking the points from frame number one okay um yeah so that's the fourth method and then uh, we have a fifth method a way which is more like uh, the segmentation and tracking so again what we do is we might be interested only some specific objects of interest right not everything uh, seen in the video uh, but instead of choosing the coordinates like what we did here uh, which might be difficult right so what we can do is we can create some masks and we can provide the mask as an additional argument so that the coordinates on the mask uh, uh, gets tracked okay so here uh, what we are doing is uh, so here we have created a mask okay we are not using this mask but uh, we are creating uh, a mask so our image or the video uh, each frame dimensions are 720 by 1280 so we have created a matrix with all zeros and then uh, we are slicing this matrix uh, certain points uh, and we are setting the value to 256 so this is how our mask look like so what we are saying what we are doing is hey in this frame i am not interested in all this blue part i am only interested in this part so for example in the x direction it's 450 to 600 uh, pixels and in the y direction it's this uh, 660 to uh, sorry this is the x direction this is the y direction 660 to 770 so which is this direction and then 450 to 600 which is this vertical direction so what we are saying is i am only interested in tracking this part of uh, the image okay but uh, if if you want to track uh, the object as a whole uh, we might create uh, we might uh, use some segmentation models to create the complete segment in, complete segment but whereas here you can see uh, we have some uh, in the video you will clearly see uh, we have a person but there are uh, some points which uh, do not belong to the person as well okay all right so we have created the grid now this time as you can see the grid size is 120 so it's a very dense grid the reason we are doing that is these particular objects of interest we want to track them uh, with better accuracy and better resolution so instead of simply saying hey i want to have a 120 grid and track every point in the video which require lots of computation and processing time we are narrowing down our focus by using the mask and at the same time we are increasing the grid size so that we can track more uh, points within the objects of interest all right so it's the same thing we supply the grid size uh, sorry the grid one 
and we also supply the mask so that's the additional uh, uh, argument we are supplying so let's see the video so this is our mask part where we have the points now about 80 percent of the points for example these from red to blue these points are on this person or this player whereas the points in pink color uh, those are on the ground okay because this person is moving as a whole now we should see all these points from green to blue moving uh, in the direction uh, the player is uh, moving and the pink points should remain uh, where they are okay so let's see how the result look like yeah that looks quite nice okay so all these points belonging to the person are moving and all the points on the ground uh, they remain uh, where they are okay again uh, there is some slight uh, shift or vibration uh, that's because uh, from my understanding the way the model works is it tracking the points together so when we define all these points it's tracking these points relative to one another or feeding the information one point to another so because this person uh, moved uh, so there is some influence of those points on these points so that's why uh, there is a slight uh, movement in these points okay uh, at the beginning all right and finally uh, we can do the dense track i mean we don't need to uh, create this uh, mask to do the dense tracking uh, we can do the dense track on the whole video but again that require lots of computations memory etc right but uh, just for the demonstration purpose what we are doing here is uh, why is this this <laughs> okay our video shape uh, uh, again the video argument so i ran this notebook before and then i uploaded the notebook uh, just to show you the output okay uh, that's why you will see these cells uh, without uh, the run number but uh, i'll show you what we are doing so our video you remember it's 720 by some 1220 sorry i'll show you again yeah it's 720 by 1280 uh, resolution right if we are creating a grid size of let's say 120 uh, that will be too many points right so what we do is let's reduce the resolution of the video uh, just to save the time and uh, complete uh, uh, the tracking uh, within a reasonable amount of time so what we are doing is we are reducing the video dimensions to just 100 by 180 so this is how our output uh, video looks like okay so we have reduced the uh, video dimensions from this used to be 720 and this used to be some 1280 or something so we have significantly reduced the dimension but again you don't need to do this if we have high uh, computing power uh, we can do the dense tracking on the original video itself okay but for the demonstration purpose we have reduced the resolution of the video so this one uh, this time we are inputting uh, this interpolated video uh, because we have uh, again reduced the resolution and while doing that we have used this bilinear method uh, because we are com we are sort of computing the average of multiple pixels and making into one pixel so that we can reduce the number of pixels right so for interpolation uh, this bilinear algorithm has been used and then we are saying hey query from frame number uh, 20 okay so what this does is it will do this dense tracking again our video uh, resolution has reduced significantly so uh, it's, it's hard to see what is happening here uh, but uh, i think this is the apple video not the players video okay so as i mentioned i did not run this notebook uh, at once because i was running into memory issues so i did uh, quite a few experimentation running uh, different met uh, methods uh, etc okay so I'll quickly summarize. Um, uh, it's very simple. Uh, just download the repo and install the required libraries. Uh, load the modules. And uh, we have a helper function uh, to see the video. And then all we are simply doing is we are loading our uh, video. We are reshaping it because that's what the model expects. 
and then we are loading our model and then we have six different methods so in method one uh, along with the video we supply a grid size and from frame number one itself all the points on the grid are tracked and uh, in method number two we can track specific points in the video and also we can specify from which frame so here we have four points from frame number one and one point from frame number 40 so this is how it looks like uh, we have four points at the beginning and a fifth point from frame number 40 all five points being tracked okay now in the third one uh, it in some cases we might not want to have we might not want to track the points from the first frame because our object of interest might not exist at the be beginning of the video so in such a case we can specify uh, the frame from which uh, the points uh, need to be tracked so this is how it looks like uh, we are tracking the points from 50th frame so at 50th frame we have this grid right perfect uh, lattice grid and then all those points are tracked and if you want to track those points where they are at the beginning i mean the points on the 50th frame or any particular frame we can enable this backward tracking option so that those points can be tracked both in the forward direction as well as the backward direction okay now among all this probably this is the most uh, useful one because often we might have specific objects of interest we want to track them with good resolution so in a typical case what we do is we create a mask and we provide the mask as a reference and then we tag track those points uh, on a densely grid okay uh, whereas here what we did is uh, we initialized an umpire array uh, with size 720 by 1280 uh, that's the same size as our video frames and then uh, we have chosen a, a, a space and set it to 256 so this is how our masks look like so what we are saying is hey i am interested in tracking only this part uh, with good resolution and you can ignore uh, the rest of the uh, thing so this is how it looked like uh, so that's method number five here we have uh, from red to blue the points on this person and then the pink ones are on the ground so we saw all the points on the person they move uh, together and this one uh, stayed here okay and in the final one we can uh, we can do dense uh, tracking as well but that require lots of computation so for the demonstration purpose we have reduced the video size uh, from 100 to uh, 180 uh, whereas our original video is 720 by some 1280 so we have significantly reduced the resolution of the video and then uh, uh, we uh, call the model with this uh, uh, low resolution video and uh, in all these cases uh, these functions and the visualization of video is the same uh, we are changing only one or two configuration parameters here i which is we might be providing a particular frame we might be asking it to track only in the forward direction backward direction or dense tracking right but uh, it's a the api is very uh, neat and uh, uh, very clear okay uh, that's all from this video if anything is not clear uh, please ask me in the questions i'll try to uh, answer